pass more than that. So just over an hour and a half. 6-4, 6-3, 7-5 to the defending champion. Yes, undoubtedly, he gave it his very best shot, as they say. And more power to him. We'll see a lot more of him, of course. And uh, I'm afraid Roger Taylor remains the last British man to get to the last eight way back in 1973. Now, the umpire for that uh, match that we've just watched was, of course, the umpire who was involved with the Jeff Tarango affair here on um, Saturday. This is the man. This is him working today, Bruno Ribeir. And um, uh, there were allegations made against him by Tarango, the American player, after he walked off court on Saturday. Well, Tarango's been back here today um, with a press announcement. We can hear that now. Um, I'd like to say that uh, my wife and I had to stand alone and defend ourselves against an overwhelming pressures. Her resilience through all of this has been incredible. We, feel, we both feel that what we have done was what we were forced to do in desperate moments. We are taking a stance on this issue and as a result paying a huge price. I have been assured that a proper investigation will follow where all the evidence of the case will be brought to the Grand Slam Committee's attention. So far, I feel the investigation is going on and hopefully will continue to be conducted as fairly as it has been so far. I would like to thank Mr. Alan Mills and Mr. Bill Babcock for listening to me and understanding my position in this extreme and very unusual situation. I feel there is a great need for someone to stand up for the players, and I would like to thank Matt Vlander, Wayne Ferreira, John McEnroe, Pete Sampras, Scott Melville, the entire Joyce family, and all other players who supported me. I'd also like to add that I'm very sorry that Marco Say's name came out in this, and I am sure he has no involvement, and I would also like to add that he, I think he's a very truly great player. I really wish the players in the sport of tennis all the best and hope we can make sh great strides to ever improve our great sport. Jeff Tarango a little earlier. Now, he got fined £10,000 a day, incidentally, uh, but we reckon he's earned about 17000 here in singles and doubles, so he's ahead at the moment in terms of money, that is. Now, a couple of results which you, uh, we may not have given you uh, since you tuned in, so to speak. Uh, Boris Becker is into the last eight. He be beat Dick Norman. Uh, a lucky loser came from the qualifying tournament. Now, Norman has had a great uh, tournament up till now because he'd beaten Cash and Edberg on the way, two former champions. But another former champion, Boris Becker, was too much for him today. Three straight sets on that. Now, here's uh, Cedric Pialin, unseeded, has got through against uh, Peter Korda of the Czech Republic. He's through in straight sets and he will meet Becker in the last eight. A couple of uh, ladies' results for you. Steffi Graf, well, we thought she had an injury problem. It certainly doesn't look like that. Nobody can hardly get a game off her. Grocha Tame off her. Grocha Tegi of Argentina got just one today. Graf plays Mary Jo Fernandez in the next round. And uh, a win for Kimiko Date of Japan, seeded six. Uh, she got through in three sets against Marianne de Schwart of South Africa and will play Jana Novotna next. There's the quarterfinals of the ladies, the last eight, Graf against Mary Jo Fernandez, Novotna against Darty, uh, Gabriella Sabatini, who had a very tight match today, uh, just about got through. She plays the champion, Conchita Martinez, and it's Brenda Schultz against Arancha Sanchez. Looks like Graf at the moment to me. Right, we're off for more men's singles action. There's Goran Ivanisovic, twice the final. Well, while you can understand his feelings, I think Rubo was right in both cases. Well, Sampras took advantage of the break once again, taking the second set to 6-3. We rejoin it in the third with Rizetsky serving to stay in the match. He's trailing 5-6. Love 15.
40. So the champion has three match points. Fifteen forty. Again, set match, Santos. Two sets to left, six four, six three, seven five. A standing ovation here for Greg Ruzetsky, who has fought his heart out. He's performed for this highly patriotic crowd. Not performed well enough to win, but he was playing the defending champion, who was playing at his very best. He had to. In fact, Sampras's last game there to break the Ruzetsky serve was quite brilliant. So it's a day that Greg Rosetsky will remember all his life. And it's a day for which I think all of us who support the game in Britain will be very thankful for. Well, Delena loved that too. And uh, Lucy Connor behind the girlfriends of the two players. I agree with every word you said, John. I think uh, my, my hat comes off to Greg Rosetsky. He coped with Sampras playing absolutely wonderful tennis and you cannot ask more than that so just over an hour and a half six four six three seven five to the defending champion Pete played very well today and uh, all credit to Pete I mean he came out there and he did the job and he put the crowd so to speak to rest but I've had a few chances today I mean I had a chance to break him early on in the second set and a few opportunities but Pete proved why he's been number one and he's why he's won this championship the last two years you mentioned before the match that the serve would be the key. Were you pleased with the way you served today? I thought I served reasonably well. I mean, the conditions were a little cooler today, so that sl slowed the balls down, and um, I think it changed the game plan a little bit. But um, I was quite pleased with the serve. Do you think that maybe Greg was possibly trying a bit too hard to please everybody? <laughs> well, I noticed him smiling after every point in the beginning, and I was just trying to wipe that smile off his face. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think there was, a, there was a point when I was really starting to get a a pretty good read on a serve and I think he was trying to over hit a little bit trying to go for the big serve and missing some but uh, you know he's got to work on some things in his game I mean uh, you know he's got to maybe return a little bit better and pass a little bit better but I think he came out a little bit nervous today and uh, I thought I played pretty well. The crowd has been wonderful and all the letters I've had and people calling me up and congratulating me and and just being so positive and so so lovely so I want to try to give back as much as I can by signing as many autographs and maybe doing some stuff with the kids and just giving back all I can because what they've given me this week and last week have just been tremendous. You were giving them most of your wardrobe it seems. Well the... after the match I signed a few autographs and then after that I gave away a few shirts and wristbands and some headbands because I mean they come out and they watch me and maybe not all of them got to be on center court today but I knew they were supporting me so I felt like giving something back to them and uh, I don't need the clothes anymore unfortunately <laughs> because I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were some happy fans outside uh, the dressing room today. Now, Peter, Rosetsky really uh, was outplayed today, wasn't he? I mean, there wasn't a lot he could do against a, an informed Sampras. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, Pete hit it on the head. Uh, Greg is a good player. He has a great serve, but he, he really lacks some of the things that, that Pete does so well. He, 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 he does need to work on his return a little bit and his ground strokes, but I, I think he has a good chance of improving those. How good do you think he can be? <laughs> well, that's a difficult thing to say. I, I think that uh, uh, with his big game, that if he got on a roll, that, that he could be a threat someday in the future uh, at one of these major championships. What difference do you think uh, him coming over here will make to the other British players? Is it a good thing, in your view? Well, I think it is. I, I don't necessarily think that it'll have 
uh, really much of a bearing on the Davis Cup team or, or, or the matches he wins. I think that'll be insignificant really compared to just the positive effect that he'll have on the up-and-coming players because uh, although he is a good player, the, his major strength, as you can see, is, is really right up here in, in his attitude. His attitude is, is spectacularly positive. And, and he really doesn't seem to be bothered by any adversity. And, and uh, I, I think that it would be good for some of the young British players just to see how he reacts to things. He certainly reacted well after the match today. Didn't seem to, disappointed, still smiling. But uh, certainly Pete Sampras was smiling. Uh, he's through. And we'll next face Shuzu Matsuoka, who was out on court 13. And uh, Peter, I mean, we all know how important it is to win matches at Wimbledon, but some celebrate more than others, don't they? Take a look at this one. He's been watching a few too many J League matches. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Through to face Pete Sampras. He can't imagine how he's going to celebrate if he wins against Sampras. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be something to see. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, though. I think something really extraordinary would have to happen. As well as Shuzo's playing, uh, I think something amazing would have to happen for him to be Pete. Oh, well, we'll see in a couple of days. Well, in a moment, we'll uh, be showing you the men's quarterfinal lineup. But first, a look at how they got there, starting with Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi certainly appeared relaxed before his match, taking time out to check the headgear on young Zach Gilbert, the son of his coach, Brad. It was in the fourth round last year that Andre Agassi's Wimbledon came to an end, but he cruised through today against Alexandra Mons. The German ranked 117 in the world was beaten 6-3, 6-3, 6-3. Mons, who found himself in the last 16 after Jeff Tarango's sensational weekend walkout, said Agassi was hitting the ball so hard and so well, there was nothing I could do. Agassi was pretty pleased with his own performance too. Psychologically, I'm feeling 10 out of 10, he said. His victory today means he's dropped just one set. Oh, he's trying with it. Like a puppet on the string. Oh. Agassi's next opponent is Jaco Elting. Elting from Holland reached the quarterfinals for the first time after defeating Wayne Ferreira of South Africa. Game, set, match, Elting. Dick Norman, playing in his first Grand Slam event, had made history at the championships as the first lucky loser to beat two former champions. And he was a point away from taking the first set against Boris Becker. But it went to a tie-break, Becker held his nerve and he won it 8-6. Norman's Wimbledon run came to an end two sets later. Boris Becker threw to another quarter-final, but Wimbledon will remember Dick Norman. Peter Corder had grabbed a few headlines when he defeated the number five seed Michael Chang in the second round, but he met his match in Cedric Peeling. Pialin, a quarter-finalist two years ago, also caused a second-round upset when he defeated Jim Currier. Today, he completed a 7-6, 6-3, 6-2 victory. Yeah. Goran Ivanisevic at four and Todd Martin at 14 was the only match in the fourth round involving two seeds. The two players slugged it out in four tight sets. The first one went to Ivanisevic, 6-4. The next three sets went to a tie-break, even Izovic moving two in front before Martin staged a Game slight recovery, but he couldn't contain even Izovic's power and he marches on. The blonde Russian player Yevgeny Kofelnikov met Aaron Krikstein. Kofelnikov, currently ranked seven in the world, recently reached the semi-finals of the French Open and he was in good form on court 14, winning in three sets, 7-6, 6-3, 6-2. So their confirmation of the quarter-final lineup, and uh, Peter, do you uh, see any of the top four seeds being particularly troubled there? Well, I don't really. I, I think that uh, certainly uh, Jaco Elting is a great athlete, but but his serve and volley game will certainly uh, Andre likes an, a target, and and uh, uh, I think that the interesting match there will be Kafelnikov and Ivanisevic, mm -hmm. because I, I think that, and, and I think a lot of people agree with me that Kafelnikov is a potential. Mm -hmm 
t number one in the world even, and, and it'll be interesting to see how far he has progressed uh, against Ivan Isovich, who on grass is a tough customer. Yeah, and what about Boris Becker here? I mean, he seems to have the same hunger to yeah. succeed here. Well, you know, Boris, a three-time champion, loves grass, and, and in fact, I thought his build-up on clay was was pretty impressive. He had quite a few good matches, and, and although uh, he didn't play well in Paris, he, uh, he looked to be hitting the ball well, and so um, with the confidence that he gains by switching to grass, I think he's a threat. Which player do you think has prepared the best through the first week, or is in at the right place now, at the right, at the right stage? Well, I think that uh, Agassi and Sampras, both of them have had some testing matches and, and came through them well, and, and I think that they both should be pretty pleased with where they are. Okay. Well, we've seen the number two seed in the men's go safely through to the quarterfinals. Let's now see how the number two seed in the ladies fared. Arancha Sanchez Vicario, who was a finalist in both Grand Slam events this year, today faced a challenge from the number nine seed, Anka Huber. Sanchez Vicario openly admits that grass is not her favorite surface, having never got past the quarterfinals here. So today, could the big forehand of Huber upset the Spaniards' rhythm? It certainly did early on. We pick up the match with Huber serving, leading for love. Elting leads by three games to one. Third set. So Elting retains the advantage with his eighth ace today. Fifteen love. Fifteen thirteen. Well, now from behind Agassi. Elting is uh, beginning to hit clean winners. Third job. Break point against Agassi for only the third service game in the match. Just well, what he dreamed of was the fault first serve with a chance to chip and charge on the second, and then he fluffs it. Advantage Agassi.
Elton leads by three games to two, third set. Agassi leads by... Meanwhile, on court number one, uh, Pete Sampras has squared the match. He's taken the second set against Matsuoka. Um, the Japanese had a chance for a 4-3 lead and a break, but uh, eventually dropped those chances. Sampras has taken the set. It's one set all. And that continues on BBC Two right now, that match. So Agassi surviving a second break point or a, a point that would have put him two breaks down and it was very important from his point of view that he should have surged back as he did well but uh, he's just slightly gone off the ball yes he's not quite the player he was in the first couple of sets but uh, he's beginning to hit those miss hits into the court that uh, so infuriated uh, everybody who wanted Wheaton to do even better against him He's got this uncanny knack of not only hitting pure, beautiful shots out of the middle of that very flamboyant racket of his, but he also seems to get pretty well every miss hit in as well. Now, Elting deserves a lot of encouragement here because he's had to fight hard and stay really cool to get this lead. So from the far end, looking at Agassi producing exactly the right shot. It would have been difficult to pass and see him following it in in case it's necessary. Back into the serious, focused Agassi mode. Fifteen forty. Took the lady a while to decide, but the arm came out and she called it out. is a terrific point that volley was excellent it really was elting quick to the net and very solid when he got there Coming to the punishing returns once again. And he's done well, really, to hang on as well as this. John, I think he was astonished then to get a more or less basic volley at a reasonable height instead of off his toes. Fifteen log. Then we serve two double faults now. Well, 
That was on the line. Now, this is a shot here that Elting plays, which he really does need because there's more pace in it with topspin. He's tried that a lot and failed a lot. Third job. Well, looked at from the uh, despairing aspect. He was hanging back a bit, expecting possibly a lob. It was still perfect. Game Madison. Agassi leads by four games to three and two sets to off. So Agassi focused again thoroughly producing that teasing lob and the seventh and ace aces he's hit today. I think the help that Gilbert has given him, Bill, ever since they started working together, has helped him to use his wonderful repertoire of shots much more intelligently. Well, for sure, that's true. Brad Gilbert has just instilled into Andre Agassi's mind. There he is at the back. Could be running a sort of baccarat table in Las Vegas, couldn't he, or something. He's he's a man who knows about every sport, or claims he does. He'll tell you when Arsenal last scored a goal at uh, Tottenham, that sort of thing. And uh, he's great value to talk to. And he's he's got right into Agassiz's mind and convinced Agassi that he's not out there just to entertain, which he always has done and always will, but he's out there actually to focus on the match, which we're seeing right here. There's no really flamboyant... Um, behavior coming out of Agassi. He is out there to win, and he is to win in any way he can. Uh, behind in the set for the first time. Well, there are a couple of characters I wouldn't play a drop shot or a stop volley against. One is this man, the other one's Chang. They both read it early and they both get there quickly and they both clean up. Fifteen thirteen. First service. Fifteen forty. Yes, and even when you do anticipate, and it was good anticipation, the sheer pace beats you, and the dip. The top spin. Two break points. Thirty, forty.
A ninth ace there for Elting. Advantage Elting. So as good a game as he served there to bring the score level and catching the center line there and bringing up the not chalk but titanium the groundsman Eddie Seward tells me mixed with clay. Well taken from behind Elting. He's a good athlete. He jumps, doesn't get it in the middle, but it's totally satisfactory. And finally, we see the drive volley, Third of job. which Agassi is a master. Seen him do it over the years. It used to be his only volley, virtually. Never went anywhere near the net except to shake hands. Always had that drive volley. The master at work. Game Edison. Edison leads by five games to four and two sets to loss. So just four points from defeat, Elting, here. But he's fought valiantly. He's looked confident all the time. And I suppose, Bill, when you've beaten a couple of seeds, Michael Steak nine and Wayne Ferreira seven, as well as a former world number one in Max Villani, you're entitled to feel confident. Yeah, and he played well throughout. Yes, and he played well throughout all those matches. And uh, he absolutely does, because uh, he's a man who doesn't fear the best players. He's beaten Pete Sampras twice, for example, once in the first round in Philadelphia. And uh, he's beaten uh, Courier when he was at the height of his fame. But right here, he's up against a man playing um, really different stuff altogether. He's playing against a man who, wherever you hit the ball, is likely to produce the pass or the lob. And that point, the last Tom. point, penultimate point of the last game, where they had that volleying exchange, was absolutely extraordinary. Elton was volleying well all the time. Off that, lashed past him. And he excites spectators like no other player. Four, five, third ten. Fifteen, thirteen. 
15 rounds. And this is the first stop volley that Elting has played in the match. That has worked, but Agassi was a long way away. Thirty, fifteen. He seems to have more time to produce his shots. I know that's sitting up and begging to be hit. But he seems to have so much time to decide which side to go. And you certainly can't read him. Oh, and even that is in. How cool. You won't get a better approach than this. 30, 40. Forcing. Forcing Agassi to run at full tilt. And he makes his winner and produces his first match point. Thank you. So there it is, the world number one, the number one seed here, and the popular favourite to win for the second time here has produced another masterly performance, well challenged by Jako Eltink, who had that two-love lead in the third set, the only time he got his nose in front. So there'll be the usual cheering, I think, from the Agassiz supporters, they are legion. A smile from Brooke Shields and a wave of farewell until the semi-final. He's there again. Yes, Agassi in super form. Only David Wheaton has taken a set off him so far. He's into the semi-finals here on Friday. Now, on court number one at the moment, it's Sampras against Matsuoka. Matsuoka's put up a super show here. Uh, he took the first set on the tie-break, had chances for 4-3 in the second, uh, but dropped those. Uh, Sampras took that set, and Sampras leads 3-2 with a break in the third set. Now, that's continuing right now on BBC Two. And, of course, here, very shortly, we'll be back on centre court for uh, Kafelnikov against Ivan Isovich, the third of the quarterfinals on here today. But uh, while we're waiting for them to come on court, let's enjoy a little bit of junior tennis. The likes of Lendl and Cash and Edberg have won the junior Wimbledon title in their time. The last British player to do so was Stanley Matthews Jr. 33 years ago. But there's a prospect uh, at the moment called Martin Lee from West Sussex. Uh, he's been in the third round of the junior tournament today against Peter Vessels of Holland. Lee took the first set. There's a tie break in the second. Here it is. Vessels. 
Well, perhaps Martin Lee not quite coming in quick enough on these uh, couple of balls. Again. Again, not really getting in past the service line. 3-0, Vessels. It was a good return from Vessels, but set it up nicely with that return. But here is the pass, and accepting his chance to do that, which is good play. So Vessels with the break. Four zero, Vessels. Well, this drop volley was played very well. Something that you don't see particularly in this match so far, but good change of tactic. Four one, Vessels. Well, a good return. Then he held his pass very well, waited till Vessels moved there, and then he hit it down the line. Great serve. Four two, Vessels. So Martin Lee, while they change ends, really has to focus and concentrate on this next point. Here's one more serve, perhaps taking him to four three then be able to put a little bit more pressure on his opponent. Very important he wins this point. Well played. Ball three, Vessels. So now, Peter Vessels to serve for two points. Vessels. High risk second serve, but it worked. make this return at 5-3 down the tie break. Yorked Vessels as he was coming in. Good dipping return, low across the net. Gets the mini break back. So, come on Martin now. Five all. Done well to get back to five all. Great serve, two good serves. A little glance over to the coach's corner for a little bit of inspiration. Martin Lee now has his first match point. Jackie Barkley saying, come on, Martin. And there it is. <laughs> Great play from Martin Lee, Ian Barkley, Jackie Barkley, and all the clan of coaches and players absolutely delighted. Ian Barkley gasping for breath out there. A very, very good win for Martin Lee, Chris, beating the number one from Holland, Peter Vessels, very convincingly. Ran into a little bit of trouble, but came back very well. He ran into a bit of danger with some uh, immature shots, but got himself together very, very well in the tie break came back and, uh, and won that match extremely nicely. And it's a, it's a good win for him, puts him into the quarterfinals, and it's great to see again, 6-3, 7-6. It's good to see that Martin Lee has progressed now.